Good morning and uh, welcome to this Fronius webinar on smart meters. Uh, my name is David Porter. I'm one of the technical advisors here at Fronius in the UK uh, and I'll be uh, covering the content over the next hour with my colleague Natalie Woodford who's also here to support with questions uh, a little bit later on. So uh, the agenda today is first to have a look at what a Fronius smart meter is, how we use those in our systems and uh, what advantages you get for um, monitoring your uh, energy within the building. So we'll talk about how to choose the right meter for the right project and the right installation and also make sure that you have the correct current transformers if they're required. We'll look, go through the process of installing the smart meter, looking at the wiring, uh, looking at how you commission it on the data manager. We'll also then look at how you set up export limitation and how you connect multiple smart meters together to, to monitor uh, broader systems uh, looking at sp covering specific loads and third party systems as well. Following on from that we'll talk about some of the uh, supporting documents that we have for uh, the smart meters. So let's have a look at some of the benefits of having the Fronia smart meter installed. Uh, first of all, you can have uh, the energy balance uh, viewed for your system. So you can see what energy is being imported and exported from the grid. And uh, then uh, you'll be able to see how well the system is performing if you're balancing your consumption within the site with what's uh, being demanded. You can also uh, analyze uh, your, the performance of your system, look to see if you have any loads that are uh, taking excessive amount of energy from the grid, you can make sure that everything's performing correctly. You can display the data both on the screen of the smart meter and also through solar web. So uh, you get free access to the data and you can look at data over longer periods of time as well, not just instantaneous values. You can meter uh, additional sources. So for example, you can connect to uh, the energy package, which is uh, the battery system, or uh, a uh, an inverter, which is from another manufacturer. You can show your self-consumption rate. So you can see a percentage of your energy generated being used within the building. And obviously the higher that is, the better the benefit you're gonna be getting from your PV. You can also use information for energy consulting. So this is very useful to installers who want to upsell products. You can take data for a, for a customer's site for the course of a year, and then you can go back and suggest any additional technologies which would improve their performance. You can use this as a basis for retrofitting. So you could in fact just install the smart meter and the data manager box, collect data on the site, uh, even before you have the uh, inverter installed and the PV installed. This means you'll be able to see immediately the improvement that you're getting on your P from having the PV system installed. You can control the solar battery. So with our new Gen 24 inverters and our older uh, Simo hybrids, they both require a uh, smart meter in order to control the battery charging and discharging. We can also control energy management. So we can switch loads on and off within a building. So when you have excess energy, you can switch on devices. Uh, and uh, when you, uh, when you uh, have lower light levels, you can switch off unnecessary loads, which may be causing draw in from the grid. We can also connect the own pilot, which is our stepless uh, energy diverter for resistive loads. So for water heating, infrared uh, heating as well, those, um, those, uh, that device can be controlled by the smart meter. And also probably the thing most people are familiar with is uh, power reduction and feed in uh, limitation. So the smart meter gives the in inverter or the data manager the information it requires uh, to ramp down and ramp up performance so that we're not uh, feeding back to the grid. So before we go any further, what I'd quite like to do is uh, ask you all uh, a quick poll. So what we'd like to ask is, uh, what do you currently use the smart meter for? Are you uh, using the, the uh, units for export limitation 
or uh, are you monitoring consumption within uh, a customer's property or are you using battery storage or you're not using them at all if you're using it for multiple uh, options please uh, click as many as, as you want let's have a look at how these these votes are coming through okay we'll give it a few more seconds Okay, nearly nearly all voted now. Brilliant. Right, let's close that poll and have a look at the results. So uh, I think it's probably to be expected the majority of the installations are uh, taking place using uh, export limitation. So yes, we certainly see that the majority of smart meters are installed to control export back to the grid. And uh, that, that is obviously a key feature with the, with the smart meter. We're also seeing there quite a lot of people uh, are using uh, consumption monitoring. And really, this is probably one of the key uh, advantages of having a smart meter on all new installations is that you can really upsell future products just by being able to see what the customer's really doing on that system. So we really recommend uh, wherever possible using the smart meter for this, uh, this function. And of course, if you're using it for anything else, the batteries or the export limitation, the, uh, the consumption monitoring is there uh, as well. So that's always, always available. Uh, we see a few customers there using it for uh, battery storage. Uh, we expect to see a lot more installations in future uh, with uh, battery storage when we bring the new Gen 24 inverters out. Uh, we'll have our, our first single phase hybrid inverter coming out early next year, and we have uh, the three phase Simo Gen 24 uh, available uh, within, the, within the coming weeks. So we, again, we expect to see that uh, battery usage really increase. Uh, in terms of the, the single phase inverter, we'll, we'll see shortly that we have a new meter, uh, which fits really well with the Gen 24 Primo. And yep, we still have quite a few people there who are not currently installing uh, the uh, smart meter. Obviously, uh, hopefully we'll show you some of the advantages today and you may uh, consider that it's worth starting to explore installing the, the, the smart meter on a number of your, your future projects. Okay, so let's have a quick look at how we visualize the data within our solar web platform. Uh, what you see here is our standard view uh, for a system which does not have the smart meter. Uh, we have a live view of the inverter performance, and we also have a, a day curve showing the performance over the course of uh, that day. If you add the smart meter in, we see a slightly different view. We now have the inverter data again, but we now have uh, a, a uh, bubbles feeding into the building and uh, showing data, uh, the data of how much is load is being used within the building. And we can also see if there's energy flowing to and from the grid. If you have a battery installed, we can also see the charge and discharge of that battery. Also, the energy balance for the day has changed. We now see red overnight where we're drawing in energy from the grid, and we can see green where we're drawing that, or we're sending that back as, as feed in back to the grid. Now, in a perfect situation, you would actually not have any red or any green showing on that graph because what you want to do is to be 100% self uh, sufficient and consuming 100% of your energy. That would be the absolute ideal world. But obviously, in the real world, you're always going to see maybe some uh, feed into the grid and some, some demand as well. If you click on the energy balance uh, window, you'll see some more uh, detailed information over the course of the day. We can now see in uh, the black line, which is the load for the building. We can see the gray under the graph, which is the energy that you're using directly from your solar. And in green there, we can see the excess energy, which is going back to the grid. It's probably more interesting if you view this over the course of a month or a year, or as a total for your site. And then you can easy, easily see any uh, improvements in your self-consumption, which may come from making some changes to your lifestyle, 
starting to put in some additional energy saving technologies or battery systems and hopefully over a period of time you can track uh, the improvements that you, uh, you you make with your system a very nice new feature we have is the simulation tool so if you have the pv system installed without a battery uh, what you can do is run the system for a period of time get some data on what you're importing and exporting and then uh, uh, simulate the installation of a battery. Uh, the system will actually calculate how much import and export is possible for your um, for your system and work out the additional saving and the improvement to your self-consumption if you install a battery system. And that's shown here by the gold bars that's showing the improvement in self-consumption. So you can do this for a variety of different battery sizes and you can model uh, that improvement. And you can actually also do this using the own pilot so you can look at the energy saving on your hot water or your heating bills. If we have a look also at how the export limitation and control works together. If you have a typical system uh, where maybe you have an inverter which is producing 1500 watts it's currently feeding 1,000 watts to your loads on site, and it's exporting 500 watts to the, the grid. You can put that surplus 500 watts into your hot water using an own pilot. This is very much a similar idea to um, if you had a battery. You're diverting that into a different, uh, different load. What then happens if the inverter performance incre uh, increases? It may be bright sunshine. You now have the inverter producing 5,000 watts. The own pilot's able to increase its output while the loads remain, maybe remain the same. And we still have some export then back to the grid. If you have export limitation in place, the uh, smart meter will feed that information back to the inverter and the data manager card, and it will reduce back, throttle back the performance of the inverter. So we may now only see 4,000 watts coming from the inverter and zero going back to the grid. So we're able to dynamically uh, increase and decrease the output of the inverter depending on what load is needed within the building. And that's where uh, an own pilot or a battery uh, can be very beneficial to, to your customer because you can increase that consumption on site and reduce what's going back to the grid or the level of uh, power reduction at the inverter. So there's a couple of the key functions uh, available for, from using the smart meter. What we'll do now is have a look at the actual devices themselves and see some of the advantages of different units for different installs. Uh, a number of you may be familiar with the uh, Frenia smart meter 50KA. This unit was installed on pretty much every installation up until uh, 2020. Uh, it was available for single, split phase and three phase installations and it required uh, current transformers. Um, now, uh, the programming of this was undertaken using the, the uh, buttons on the front of the screen there. We've got a P button and a, an arrow button. And um, in order to uh, use this for export limitation, we needed to provide you with modified CTs. Now, they were quite difficult to install. There was uh, a lot of additional programming to do on the device. So this uh, unit has now been discontinued. And it has been replaced with the new Fronia Smart Meter UL. And this is specifically uh, for export limitation, where you uh, need to have a CT disconnection detection to be G100 compliant. So this means if you had a situation where somebody cut through the cables for your CTs, the meter is able to detect that there is a problem on site and uh, an error message is sent to the inverter and the inverter is able to go into a fail safe mode. And that is uh, the key advantage of this new UL smart meter. It's been launched this year in the UK and Ireland and it's available in two versions, which is a single phase and a three phase unit. So the single phase version is 240 and the three phase version is the 480. As I mentioned, the CT detection is, uh, is a key feature of this unit for G100 compliance. And it uses voltage type CTs, not the current type CTs used on the older meters. 
personally, I find this uh, meter much easier to install uh, because you simply look at the, the LEDs on the front of the meter to check that you have a good uh, connection with the CTs and uh, the addressing is done using the, the dip switches on the front of the device here. We also have a new range of uh, touchscreen smart meters. Uh, we're calling these the TS range. I want to really focus on the 100 amp meter. This meter is particularly useful for uh, UK and Ireland, where we have single phase installations with up to 100 amp supply and uh, 25 uh, millimeter cross-sectional area cables for the incoming cables. We now have terminals on this meter that mean that you can directly connect this after your main breaker within a, a building. And that means that we now have a meter that can fit within your consumer, consumer unit uh, that needs no CTs and has a significant cost saving. So this unit is now about a third of the price of uh, the previous units that we're, we're installing. So we're really expecting this to be very popular for uh, Primo installations, whether that be the Snap-in or the new Gen 24. As well as this, we have two, uh, two other new meters. We have the 65 amp three-phase meter, which is similar to the 100 amp, but with a three-phase supply. And that's a direct connection again, so no CTs are used. And we also have a 5KA. So this is a, a meter of, you, that can be used with uh, CTs for larger scale installations. Personally, I would recommend using the, the TS uh, sorry, the UL480 rather than the 5KA because it has that G100 compliance. And we need to make sure that if we are using the current transformers, we're using the correct ones uh, uh, for the right meter and the right sizing ratio. So the CTs measure the current from your incoming supply. So they clamp around uh, the incoming cables, uh, one per phase, and what I'd always recommend using split core, which are hinged so you can clamp them around. If you have solid core, you have to disconnect the cables and feed them through the, the solid CT. So it's always better to go for split core. It's very important to make sure each, each CT has an arrow printed on it. Make sure that that arrow is in the direction from the grid to the load within the building. If it points the other way, it's going to confuse the system. Uh, the inverter is going to think it's generating, uh, it's feeding in when it's actually consuming, and you'll get uh, very poor performance from the system. So it's really critical to make sure that we have uh, the CTs wired in the correct way around. It's also important not to extend the cables, your, your current transformers. If they're extended, the, uh, the, the calibration is incorrect, you're going to actually have false readings and you're going to have a poor performing PV system. So it's very important to not extend the cables or the CTs. And it's also very important to choose the correct size CT for each installation, both in terms of physical sizing, so making sure that the aperture here is wide enough to fit around your cables, but also in terms of the current rating. So the easiest way to work out the current rating required is to look at the, uh, the, the, the supply uh, size. So if you have a uh, 100 amp supply into the building, a 100 amp CT is fine. If you have 400, 400 is fine. But always go one step uh, up on that size uh, to make sure that you're covering, uh, that you're not going to be uh, overloading the CTs. And it's also important to have a look at the secondary uh, uh, figure here. For current type, it's going to be a 5 amp output, and that's for the, the old 50kA or the new TS meters, whereas the voltage type for the new UL will have an output of 0.333 volts. So the vast majority of time from now on, we would expect to see the voltage type for the UL meter being installed. And this is what I would always check, want to check at my install, that I've got the correct CTs with the correct output. So those are the units. Let's have a quick look at the wiring for each of the types, starting with the TS100. So this is now the easiest installation on single phase systems. We simply have a neutral connection coming into the bottom of the unit, and we have line one 
or the, the, the incoming live cable coming in to the, the terminal one at the top here and then out to the phase, uh, out to the loads at the top here. At the bottom as well, we have uh, comms cables. So we have data plus, data minus and ground. And these connect into the data plus, data minus and negative on the data manager. If you have the new Gen24 inverters, we have uh, M0 plus and M0 minus, which is mod plus, mod bus plus and minus and ground. And we also have M1 minus and M1 plus. So there's actually two uh, sets of connections on the new Gen24. So that means you can have double the amount of smart meters in your system. We also have a 120 ohm termination resistor, and that is connected by simply linking out uh, from the, the the, the, the terminal at the bottom to terminal number three here, and that sets the uh, termination resistor to uh, be set on. And that needs to be done on the first and last devices in the system. So that's normally always done uh, as a default on the data manager, and then you need to do that on the last meter in the system. And that just improves the data signal quality so that you don't have any interruptions or, 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 or drop in, in, in performance. We then have a look at the smart meter TS5KA. So this is the uh, the new uh, unit. Uh, we ha now have CTs installed, and they're connecting to the terminals at the top. And we have the three uh, phase connections at the top as well. We have exactly the same setup at the bottom for the uh, data cables and the uh, uh, 120 ohm termination resistor. But we also have to install a, a single phase power supply, and that's to power up the meter. I personally would recommend going with the uh, UL24480, uh, uh, as you don't need to have that uh, additional power supply. On the 240 uh, UL, so this is the single phase solution, we simply have uh, the CT connected to the left hand side of the meter here. And then the phase and neutral connected on the right. Notice that you do need to link out the neutral into the unused two phase, uh, uh, phase two and phase three connections here. That's required. We also need to make sure that we link out uh, phase two and phase three on the CTs. And that's because if the meter does not detect uh, a voltage on the terminals, it will assume that there's a fault. So even though you've only got one CT detect, uh, connected, if it sees no, nothing at uh, the terminals for two and three, it will tell the system that there's a fault. So make sure if you have any problems during the installation, make sure that you've got those linked out. That's, that's going to be critical to your installation. We have very similar connections for the data here. So D plus D minus and ground going across to the data manager and to uh, the Gen24. And now we have a slightly different setup with the termination resistor. Termination resistor on the smart meter UL is set by putting dip switch number seven into the upright position. So just make sure that this is always in the upright position. For the three phase installation, we have a very similar setup, but now obviously we have the second and third CTs in here and we have phase two and phase three connected. Otherwise, it's the same installation. So make sure that the uh, res termination resistor is in the upright position. Make sure that you've connected at the data manager or the Gen24. One of the things I would always recommend with CT meters is to make sure that you've got the CTs the correct way around. It's very easy to make the mistake. I think everyone's done it at some point uh, where you may have one that's the wrong way or you may have all three that are set up back to front. Uh, it's very simple to do. What I would recommend you do is to avoid any confusion and put the inverter into standby mode. If you have the inverter on, it means that the uh, meter might be seeing import, it might be seeing export, it might be changing with the weather conditions. So if you if you put the inverter into standby, there is no generation, all of the energy should be coming from the grid. You do that by going to the setup menu, choosing setup, and then putting the inverter into standby. It keeps all of the communications alive for the inverters, but it just stops it from generating. It just opens the relays within the inverter. 
If you then start seeing the uh, LEDs on the meter flashing red, you know you've got the problem. Red LEDs mean that you're feeding energy back to the grid. And obviously that can't be happening if all you die. What you need to do in that situation is to turn them around so that they start to flash green instead. If you see one that's red, one that's green, then you can obviously identify which, meet, uh, which CT is the wrong way around and just change that individual one. I find this is so much easier with the UL meters as you simply have a yes, no uh, way of determining if, it, if, if things are connected correctly. If you have a single phase installation, you'll only have the single phase uh, CT light flashing. So you'll just see that one uh, LED flash. And again, that's, um, that's a correct installation. So we've just seen how to install the wiring and how to check the CTs. What we'll look at now is how to uh, activate the smart meter using our data manager uh, and the uh, online uh, uh, web browser interface for that. So we'll assume that we've already gone through the connection to SolarWeb. So we've set up the inverters and we've got the system online. What we need to do is then to go to our technician wizard. And, uh, and there's a process there, a step-by-step -step process for detecting the meter and setting export limitation if required. What I would also mention is we should always check the firmware version of the smart meet, uh, sorry, of the data manager. If you click on the little uh, information tab, you'll see the current software version. For the UL meters, we need to have version 3.12. And for the new TS meters, we need to be up to 3.16. If you have an older firmware version, you can just click to search for the new firmware and then upload, uh, update that over the internet. So make sure you do that before you start trying the detection process. So if we have now have a look at uh, a system during commissioning, uh, we'll see the welcome page for the wizards. Uh, you see the solar web wizard there, which you go through to get the system online. We then have the option of the technician wizard, which is for the more advanced settings, including the smart meter install. If you click on that, you may be asked for your login. So we want to use the uh, user level, which is service. And normally the service password is service123. So enter that into uh, the password and click login. And you'll see the general uh, tab. Now this uh, first stage should have all the information already installed from when you uh, got the system online on SolarWeb. Make sure that date and time is set and that you've got automatic um, time setting uh, connect, uh, syncing with the internet. The next page is the inverter. So you should be able to see uh, your inverter detected there. Make sure that the power uh, figure at the end here has been entered. This is required for, to make sure that all of your graphs scale correctly. So this is normally the uh, power on the DC side of your system. Make sure it's in watts, not in kilowatts. You'll then be asked for the service password again. So you can always keep the old password, the service one, two, three is standard, or you can put your own one in. I would only recommend using a, a, a bespoke password if you're setting export limitation, just to protect that from anyone interfering with it at a later date. The next thing you see is IO mapping. Now IO mapping is for using the uh, input and output controls on the data manager. If you're not in Australia, you don't need the Australian demand response modes. If you're not controlling it uh, using uh, something like a fast shutdown switch or an emergency stop, and if you're not putting load management in, you don't need to have any of those ticked. So for the most basic installations, untick all of those, and you'll see the pin assignments will all go to none. You can then click forward, and you're onto the meter detection page. So this is the key page for uh, selecting your smart meter. As a standard, you'll see the primary meter will be none selected. Click on the drop down and select Fronia smart meter. You then click on the settings and you'll see a pop up come up on screen saying that the meter activation, uh, sorry, the meter has been activated and should provide data soon. Please wait a moment. This does take a little bit longer on the new UL meters. so. Be patient, wait for an update uh, and a new message from, from the device. Don't uh, click cancel. What you'll then see 
is uh, hopefully uh, the meter has been detected and the status is okay and the consumption uh, figure is shown there. You need to make sure if it's a primary meter at your feed-in feed, um, uh, point where you have your next to your main incoming meter, make sure that you've clicked the feed-in point tab. If this was a meter just to, uh, to measure the consumption of a specific load, you would click the consumption path. So that would be just for when you're monitoring one sub-circuit within the system. There is a difference. So this is the view you'd see on the TS meters and on the old uh, 50KA. On the ULs, you have a slightly different view. On the ULs, you can also set uh, the, tra the transformer ratio. So you're putting in the 100 amps into here. And you can select whether it's a single phase or a three phase. WYE Delta is the three phase option. So you can choose that from the same menu. Once you've done that, uh, the final step is looking at dynamic power reduction. So this is export limitation. As a standard, this is switched off. So there's no limit on the amount of energy you can send back to the grid. However, if you do have an export limit, you can click the radio tab here and you can then enter the uh, size of your PV system and the maximum grid feed in power. So for example, here, if we have a G98 uh, installation and we're keeping the system to 3.68 uh, kilowatts, we put 3,600 watts into the system. And we can also then tell the system to reduce the power uh, to zero if the meter connection has been lost. And normally we would only use this if we have other uh, generators on site. And that's because if the meter uh, if the meter was to fail or the comms were to be de uh, detached, normally it would drop down to this 3,680 watt limit. But if there's another device on site which might, may also be outputting power, we need to drop down to zero because we can't be feeding in above that limit. So I would say normally only tick this if you have other generators on the same site. Once you've done that, you can click the forward and you'll be taken back to the, the welcome page. If you click on cancel, then uh, you should uh, be taken to the main uh, dashboard view showing the generation of your, uh, your inverter here on the bar chart. And on the left-hand side, you'll also see whether we're consuming from the grid or feeding back. If you've had a system that's been installed for a while and you log on and you see this data, you don't see the welcome page when you, when you connect, you can always get to the meter page by clicking settings, clicking on the meter tab here, and you'll see exactly the same information and the same options come up on the screen. So you don't have to run through that setup wizard every time. You can simply go to settings, click on meter, and add the information yourself there. So we've just seen how to install a single meter in the system, but there are uh, good opportunities to improve your knowledge of how your system's performing by adding multiple uh, meters into the same system. Uh, we call this energy profiling. And normally what we would do is we, we would have one inverter with one data manager, and we can commit, connect four devices to that. So we'll always have our primary meter, and that's the one that goes uh, right next to the grid, right next to the utility meter. And then we can either put three, invert, uh, three additional meters into that system. So we could be looking at things like uh, metering how much energy a heat pump uses, or we're looking at how much our wind turbine on site is feeding back in, or other loads, for example, the pool pump. If we decide to put a Fronius own pilot into the system, we can only put two meters in, and that's because uh, the communications for the own pilot can be done over Modbus, and so it takes up one of those four Modbus addresses. So just to reiterate, as standard, uh, without an own pilot, you can have four inverters, sorry, four meters installed per inverter, but with a Gen 24, because you have the two Modbus connections, you can have twice that, you can have eight. If you uh, connect an own pilot, but you do that either through Wi-Fi, you can also have four or eight. But if you use the own pilot uh, communications via Modbus, it takes up one of those uh, addresses. So you can only have three meters or seven with a Gen24.
And if you install uh, the uh, smart meters on the same old bus uh, string, it's very important that you connect in and out on the same connections. So we have here two, uh, two data cables. We have a uh, orange stripe, and that's crimped to the orange stripe of the second one, the orange and the green. I always recommend using bootlace ferrules. Uh, it makes life so much easier when you're trying to do the fiddly uh, work of putting these into the into the terminal block on the meter. If you crimp them before, get them uh, get them uh, already connected. Make sure you have a good uh, data connection. It makes it so much easier to handle when you're when you're working on site. So I, I, I strongly recommend wherever possible using bootlace ferrules for uh, for data connections. So that's how you connect all of your, your meters together. And just make sure, as, as always, the first and last device have the 120 amp, sorry, 120 ohm uh, resistor switched on. So at the meter and at the inverter, which is done as default. You then need to configure the address for each uh, device. So as a standard, the the devices come with an address of one, but if you have more than one in the system, each one has to have a unique address. Uh, you can see here uh, it, it's done through the touch screen on the TS meters, and uh, you put in the password, you go to the, the particular menu, which is program 14, and you change uh, the address there. But I think for the majority of installations, if you're going to be installing, you would be doing it with the UL meter. And again, I find it slightly easy with this because the Modbus addressing is done again with the dip switches, and it's a binary, uh, it's a binary selection here. So uh, if you switch uh, dip switch one into the on position, it gives it the address one. If you switch two on, it gives it the position to, uh, that gives it Modbus ID two, and to get Modbus ID two uh, three, sorry, you have to switch two and one on. So two plus one equals three. And remember, if it's the last in the sequence, you'll have number seven, which is the uh, resistor that needs to be in the on position as well. And back at the data manager, you'll see that there's a secondary meter option here. You can click the drop down, change that to a friendly smart meter, and you can give the individual meter a name. So for example, air conditioning, and make sure that you've got the right address assigned to it. Once you've done that, you'll see it listed uh, in the list, and you'll be able to see all your various different devices, whether they're uh, import, whether they're, sorry, whether they're generators or whether they're loads within the site. Once you run that for a period of time, you'll be able to see on the graphs an overlay of all your different loads and all your different generators. As you can see here, we have a couple of PV systems on one site, and we can see a heater load, which is coming in in the morning and then in the evening. Uh, there's no pilot powering up there. and We've even got some garden lighting uh, coming on for a short period in the evening. So this is a great way to really build up uh, a good knowledge of your site. And it's particularly interesting to commercial customers who may have certain uh, equipment running at different times of day and they want to really understand what's costing the company money, where they can utilize their solar better maybe by uh, reorganizing their, their workload over the course of the day and putting the high loads on when they've got the, the higher solar requirements. And this is, this is a really nice feature for, for the more sophisticated uh, installations um, and where you really want to get a, get a good grip of your energy usage. So I know we've uh, covered a lot of information here and uh, a lot of different meter types. So we, it, it's maybe a little bit overwhelming at this stage. And so we've decided what to do, the best thing to do is to put some further information together in the way of our smart meter guide. Uh, you'll be able to get access to this in the handouts for the uh, this this webinar and it's a very useful uh, document because it has uh, details of each of the meters, explanations on the CTs and it gives also gives you a flow chart where you can work through which meter is required for your project. And finally on the back page it gives a comparison of the features, how to install them uh, and also uh, a list of the compatible CD CTs so you can make sure that you're ordering the correct CT for the correct meter. 
if we just have a look at that flow chart, um, it should be fairly self-explanatory. We have a question there, is the is export limitation required? If so, is a direct connection possible? If so, you can use the uh, TS range. If it needs CTs, you need to go down to the Fresnes Smart Meter UL. If there's no export limitation required, you need to ask the question, do you need CTs? If so, it's either the single or three phase, or if you do need CTs, then you can use the 5KA. Just bear in mind that uh, if you if you don't have export limitation, but you do want a CT meter, you can either use the TS 5KA or you can use the UL meters. So most of the time, if it's a CT installation, I would recommend using these two devices. Keep it simple, only stock one uh, set of C one type of CTs and avoid any confusion there mix mixing different types of CTs. If it is a single phase installation, you can have the CT install if you don't if you can't easily uh, rewire and feed directly into the meter. But the majority of the time, I would expect that the uh, TS 100 amp meter will be the best option on single phase domestic installs. It's a much cheaper meter. It's easily um, packaged within a consumer board uh, and uh, the, there's that you don't have the problems of trying to, to fit CTs into an already uh, busy enclosure. And on the back, as I say, on the back page of the uh, document, you'll see a list there of all different meters, and you can see the, the CTs required for each meter, whether it be 100 amp through to 400. If you have a meter that requires larger CTs, you'd need to source these uh, separately. Uh, Fronius offer the, the, the sizes there, but it may be that you have a larger system which is not readily available. Um, there are obviously many uh, wholesalers and distributors for CTs uh, on, on the larger, more bespoke sites and for buzz bar chambers and those sorts of things. So uh, as long as they have the correct output and the correct accuracy class, then uh, you're able to source those uh, separately. So in summary, uh, the smart meter provides additional data for consumption analysis. So you can retrofit that to existing systems and you can use that to upsell products to your end customers and get them to really improve their, their systems uh, self-consumption. It's essential for any hybrid battery export limitation and energy management systems. The uh, inverters and the own pilot and the batteries all need to know what's happening in terms of import and export. And that's where, where you must have a smart meter installed. The new meters that we've seen today, they all replace the old 50 KAs and there are, there are advantages to different meters. And as a standard, I would recommend installing the TS100 as uh, the low cost meter for domestic installations. And then if you need a CT meter, you have the UL240 or the 280, and they'll be compliant for export limitations. So those are the, the three models I would recommend focusing on. Uh, you can also use the multiple meters on the same site, so you can build up more sophisticated uh, understanding of what's happening on your site. And also you can always refer to our Fronius smart meter brochure. So make sure to have a look at that flow chart, make sure you understand which device to order for which installation, and to make sure that you're comparing the features and getting the right CTs for the right project. Now I'd just like to uh, pass over to my colleague, Natalie, who's going to uh, just mention a nice little promotion that we've got available uh, over the next month. Thank you, David. Um, so, yeah, guys, thank you for attending our webinar. Um, for those of you that have attended, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Um, so you will be able to claim one free uh, Smart Meter TS 100 amp um, when you buy a full Primo um, from one of our distribution partners. Um, all we need to claim, or you need to do is to claim the meter is to send your proof of purchase to us on email. Um, the email address is promotions.uk at and this is valid until the 31st of October for all our customers in the UK and Ireland. Um, so it'd be a great opportunity when you're buying a, a Primo for a residential install that you can put a meter in and get the full sort of benefits on the solar web for the system owner. So then 
they can really look at their usage and their you know production consumption um, and get you guys used to installing them as well. Um, I'm also going to um, just move on to um, the questions and answers. Is that all right, David? Um, we've got um, a few come through. Um, obviously, we are um, available on our tech support lines um, by email or by phone. Um, you can also follow us on social media as well to get the latest news from us um, or sign up to our newsletter, which you can do um, via our website. Um, but David, we've got a couple of questions, so I'll start hitting those out to you. Um, so the first one we've got is, which smart meter is compatible with the new Gen 24 inverter? Uh, yes, so the good news is all of the smart meters are compatible with the new Gen24. Um, but uh, what I would say is the TS100 makes a lot of sense with the Primo, so the single phase inverter. And then for the three phase, you're probably going to go for the UL480, so that's the, the CT meter. If you want the direct connection, you can, on the three phase, you can use the 65 amp as well. Thanks, David. And the next one we have is, do we have a certificate for the UL meter for the G100 requirements? Uh, so, sorry, uh, yes, our R&D team have been working on the meter and uh, we are generating the uh, certificates at the moment. We should have those uh, this week, hopefully. Uh, so we'll be able to submit those for the year now. Uh, the meters are fully compliant, they have been tested, and uh, we are installing those on site currently. Lovely, thank you. And the next question we've got is, what is the difference between a voltage type CT and a current type CT? Uh, so the current CTs give an output, the secondary output uh, to the meter up to five amps for, at full scale deflection. So that means if you have uh, a 100 amp to five amp CT, if you have 100 amps flowing through the CT, you'll get a, uh, you'll get a feed of five amps back to the meter. On the, uh, on the voltage type, uh, instead, when you have the 100 amps going through the CT, you'll have 0.33 volts being fed back to the meter at full scale deflection. So it's simply uh, how the meter uh, receives the signal back from the CT. Lovely, thank you, David. Um, the next one we've got is, um, how do we choose the right CT for the meters? So uh, there's uh, a couple of key things to look at. Firstly, you want to make sure that it fits the aperture. So make sure it, it, it fits within uh, the internal dimensions of the CT. Uh, and then secondly, you need to look at the current that's going to be flowing through those cables. And the best way to look at that is looking at the maximum break, uh, the, si sorry, the sizing of the breaker. Uh, so that may be a 100 amp breaker, it may be a 400 amp breaker. So that will give you your primary uh, current sizing. And then obviously you just need to know that if it's a UL meter, it should be a 0.333 volt output. Uh, so yes, for, for it, the key thing to do is to have a look at the main breaker on your site and that will determine the, uh, the, the size of CT required. Thank you, David. And we've got another question of, um, do you need to have a smart meter for each load or can you just have one for the whole site? So uh, you, you only need to have the meter at, for the whole site at the, me, uh, the main metering point. If you want to then cover additional loads, that's an option. So you can have multiple meters. But the, the key thing to understand your, your usage and your import and your export is to have the first primary meter at your, your main meter point within the building. Thank you. And we have another one of what scenario would you advise fitting the three phase TS meter over a UL and what's the advantage? 
So uh, with the, uh, the TS-65, that's the one with uh, a direct connection. The advantage there would be if you have uh, a small uh, cables coming in, so uh, 16 millimeters uh, cross-sectional area or below. Uh, it means that you can connect it directly into the system and you don't need to install CTs. So there is a cost saving there. You don't need to install any CTs and uh, also the unit itself is slightly cheaper. So there's an advantage there. It's also good if you're using it as secondary meters so you can actually uh, connect that to individual three-phase loads. The uh, 5KA, um, I, I don't see that as uh, uh, as having so many advantages over the the, the 240. Uh, sorry, the 480 UL. The only advantage is it's a slightly cheaper meter to purchase, uh, but obviously you need to make sure that you've got uh, the current type CTs, not the voltage type. That's why, generally speaking, we think it's simpler to work with the 480 UL, uh, and then if you want the direct connection, go for the single or the three phase. Thank you, David. And are the smart meters compatible with our old um, IEG inverter range? So yes, if you install a Fronius data manager box, uh, which is um, a standalone uh, data logger, uh, that will uh, give you the, the functionality so that you can install a smart meter. So in the, in the event that you've got a system with an IG, you can then uh, connect the data manager box plus any of the uh, smart meter options available and you can see that system on SolarWeb and you can monitor that like all the other systems. Okay, and we have the um, last one that's been submitted. Are the voltage CTs a kind of uh, rogoski coil? Excuse me if I said that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> The point Rogowski coils, uh, no, they're not Rogowski coils. Uh, they're, they're, they're a split core uh, 0.333 volt uh, CT. Uh, we, I have been looking at some Rogowski coils which actually connect to uh, a, a small output uh, device, which then can convert to the signal for the 0.333 uh, volt input into the meter. But if you try and connect the um, if you try and connect the Rogowski cores, you won't get a, a good signal, uh, a standard. But we are looking at a, a converter tool that we may be able to use uh, to, to go from Rogowski coil into the smart meter. But that's work in progress. Brilliant. Okay, thanks, David. That's um, all the questions we've had to submit from um, our viewers today. Um, Again, thank you everyone for attending this morning. You will get a copy of the recording um, and any additional information about smart meters um, in a follow-up email from us. There is a poll at the end as well, um, just a quick survey if you wouldn't mind completing that um, so that we get your feedback and we can make sure our webinars um, you know, hit the information that you guys need to know. Um, and if you've got any suggestions of other things you want us to cover, then you know, please put those in as well. Um, so yeah, once again, don't forget, we're always here for you. You can call us or email us. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for everyone attending and we'll catch up with you guys again soon. Bye.